Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Deshpande, and in this video I want to uh, give you kind of a, I want to define this problem uh, called image classification, uh, and I want to talk to you about some of the challenges that we can encounter with image classification, uh, as well as, you know, some, I want to get some definitions kind of out of the way, uh, and, and sort of, so con more concretely discuss uh, image classification. So, first of all, I should define what image classification is. And so, what we're trying to do with image classification is assign labels to an input image. An input image. So this kind of fits the, the scheme of of a uh, just supervised classification in general is that we're trying to given some new input uh, we want to assign some labels to it but there's some specific there's some challenges specific to uh, images that we have to talk about but you know before before we we, we really get into this I want to I want to remind you that uh, images are just can their images consist of, of pixels and so what we're trying to do here, you have to remember again that the computer just sees like this grid of the computer just sees this grid of pixels. And so what we're trying to do with this is we're trying to, you know, give this labels like bird, for example. Let's you know, suppose I have like an, an image of like a bird or something, uh, you know, over here or something like that. I have some, you know, some picture of a bird, and so what I want to do is give this to my classifier, and my classifier will tell me that this, the label that works well with this image, the label that closely uh, uh, it can be tied to this image is bird. And so that's kind of the goal of, of image classification, and we're trying to add some higher level meaning to uh, this image. In, in fact, what we're trying to do is Remember, we're, we're trying to determine what is inside of an image, and that's what these labels are. These labels uh, tell us what is inside of the image. They're not just random labels, but for image classification, we want to know, we're particularly interested as to what is uh, inside of this image. But this isn't an easy problem uh, by any means, and so there's some challenges that are specific to there are some challenges I misspelled that I forgot the N there should be an N in there challenges specific to uh, specific to image classification so I just want to talk about a couple of them or we won't get to all of them uh, but one, one particular challenge is uh, scaling and that is if I have a picture of a bird if I have a picture of a small bird as opposed to then I feed my classifier the same picture, but it's now like maybe doubled in doubled in size. Then my classifier should be robust to this. I should, you know, be able to take an image, and you know, it sh there shouldn't be any dependence on size. If I can give it a picture of a small bird, I can give it a picture of a large bird, and it should be able to, or figure out, you know, which either which bird that is, or that this is a bird, right? If I give it some image of some you know, object or something. So suppose my class, I should probably define some of these class labels. You know, so suppose my class labels, uh, I don't know, suppose my class labels are something like uh, bird, uh, cat, or dog. They're just like some example class labels, for example. So if I give it a picture of one of these things, and depending on if it's a big dog or a small dog, it should still be able to identify this as a dog. Give it a picture of like a small cat or a large cat, it should still be able to identify this as a cat. And and so there's challenges uh, with with scaling. There's uh, this other challenge called uh, occlusion. And occlusion uh, is basically when part of the image is like like hidden. So part of image is hidden or you know behind behind another behind something so that would be like I had a picture of a bird and 
like maybe like a branch or something is is in the way and it's like covering up this this portion here we all we want our classifier to to be robust to things like occlusion and this is one this is a, a pretty big challenge uh with occlusion because depending on how what part you see it, we we have to make our classifier robust to this so so i uh, did let me just re mention occlusion is like if I have part of an image and it's like hidden behind some, some something else like for example what if like this tree branch that's like blocking half of my bird or something I still want to classify this as a bird so that's kind of the challenge uh, of, of occlusion uh, I guess well, we can do one more uh, one another was another good one is uh, illumination I can't spell today I guess uh, illumination is what I mean uh, and illumination is, you know, is, is lighting. Illumination is basically lighting. So, like, depending on my, my lighting conditions of whenever the input uh, Im image was taken, I, I still want to be robust to that kind of thing. I don't want my image to be classified poorly because my cat is standing in sunlight or something like that, or if my cat is, you know, in, in darkness, or if my bird is, like, you know, uh, it's a it's a cloudy day or something like that. I, I don't want that. I want my classifier to also be robust to il illumination. And, and there's so many more things. Uh, there's so many more challenges uh, with image classification, and and it makes it kind of difficult. And so there's still like work going around. There's still research going into finding ways to you know be more robust to these you know some of these uh, challenges. And and so to build a really good classifier. Uh, we need to take a, a data-driven uh, approach. So data-driven, data-driven approach. And what I mean by that is we basically give our AI tons of uh, labeled examples. Like for example, if we were doing this thing that differentiates between these three classes, we would give our AI tons of ex images of birds and tell them that tell our AI that this is a bird. We give or AI tons of pictures of cats and say this is a cat. We, you know, give our AI tons of pictures of dogs and we say this is a dog. All right. So with data driven, we want to give our AI labeled example images. And and these labeled uh, this, these labeled images are, are also commonly called ground truth. This, you know, the, this labeled example is commonly called ground truth because when we go to evaluate it, we actually compare what the uh, classifier thinks this is to what the actual value or what the actual, uh, uh, the truth of, of this image, uh, the truth of what the label is on the image, and we call that ground truth. So we compare the prediction to ground truth and say how well how well is our classifier uh, performing. But yeah, so we want this to be data driven. So we you take this approach uh, by giving our AI lots of labeled example images, and then it can like learn some uh, features off of that. But if you want to take this approach, however, you'll need uh you can't just give it like two images of a bird or uh, you know, or two of each and be done with it, right? The more uh, good training data that you have, the more high quality training data that you give your AI, the more examples that you give your AI, uh, the better it will be to discriminate between the bird, cat, uh, dog, to make to make that distinction between these classes. Uh, you want to give lots of high quality uh, examples to uh, to your AI. And and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, this a bit more. But when we collect this data set, this data set is actually something that you don't have to collect yourself. There's tons of uh, image classification data sets uh, online. I mean, there's like I think ImageNet has a few million images <laughs> across tons of different classes. Um, there's much smaller data sets, of course. There's like a there's a, the C410 data set that has like 10 different images I think it's maybe 60,000 images uh, but the point is lots of good quality training data is always preferable to some super complicated uh, classification algorithm and so uh, that is and so that kind of 
uh, illustrates that with, with image classification, we want this to be data driven. There's no way to hard code this for every bird or for every cat or for dog. We can't hard coding this would not be a good approach. And so we're taking the more data driven approach by giving uh, our giving our classifier lots of examples and with labels on them so we can learn what a bird looks like and what a cat looks like uh, and and so on. So uh, that's where I'm going to stop right here, uh, and I'm just going to do a recap real quick. So with image classification. We want to give labels to an input image based on some set of labels that we already have. And so, uh, you know, given, let's suppose I have three labels like bird, cat, and dog or something. And so, given a new input image, I want to say whether it's a bird, a cat, or a dog, right? I want to assign that label. And so, suppose, so computers only see, it, the computers only see the image as pixels, so we have to find some way to build a classifier out of just these given these pixel values and there are lots of challenges that, that are with that like I mentioned scaling as well if you have a big bird or a small bird you want to be able to still say that it's a bird there's occlusion if I have like a tree branch in the way or something like that I still want to classify this as a bird there's illumination if I have like a, a dog that it's standing in direct sunlight as opposed to a dog in a darker room or something I still want to classify that uh, as a dog and kind of that also gets into another challenge is like what's going on in the background. You want a, a very uh, a sterile background when you're getting training data. You don't want like a lot of background clutter because uh, that could mess up your, your classifier. It might learn uh, the wrong thing to associate with uh, your label that you're trying to give. But anyway, moving on. So the a good approach to doing this is, is the data-driven approach, and that is we give our AI lots of labeled example images. We give it lots of images of birds and tell it that this is what a bird looks like. We give it lots of images of cat, we say this is what a cat looks like, and, and so forth for a dog and for any other classes that you might have. But we give these example images, and it will learn some representation of you know what a bird is and what a cat is and what a dog is, and then given that, it can generalize and and when you have a new input image, it will you know do its function that is to label it as one of these uh, labels or give it one of these labels, I should say. So uh, what we are okay, so I'm going to stop right here, and then what we're going to do in the next video, um, I want to talk about probably the simplest kind of image classifier uh, that's called the nearest neighbors classifier. So I'm going to talk about that. Uh, in the next video.